Friday. So what we're gonna go ahead and do in this workout like we did in our previous video, um, we are explaining more on the fact of what muscles you should be feeling worked in each of the exercises, okay? Now, when I say you should be feeling it, in general, you're gonna feel it probably just, okay, my arm's sore or whatever. You're not gonna know, um, really completely understand the wordage that I am about to use. I'm going to go ahead and explain it by pointing to the, to the body area of where the muscle is typically located, okay? Uh, now, if you have questions, us doing this is more for the fact of we want people to be more educated whenever they walk back into a gym so that they know what they are doing and they're doing it properly. Not just by the form, but also by the feeling in you get in the muscles and that you are breathing into the muscles and getting the right contractions while doing the exercise. Okay? So, for the first exercise that we're gonna go ahead and do is going to be the dumbbell swing. Now, you can also do this exercise with a kettlebell, but today's workout is gonna be done with a dumbbell because I have a lower weight weighted dumbbell and I do not have a very light weighted kettlebell, okay? Um, so, the muscles worked in this exercise starting with the arms, okay? You're gonna be working your anterior deltoid, your middle, and your lower trapezius, and then your lateral deltoid, okay? Then moving into the chest, you are going to be working that upper pectoralis major, and then your serratus anterior that comes around right here at the underneath your ribs, okay, at the top of your ribs. Now, moving lower onto the body, because you are going to be getting in a high squat, you are going to be using, of course, your gluteus maximus, your rectus femoris, it's right here on the front of your thighs, your vastus medialis, your vastus lateralis, it runs on the sides, your hamstrings, and then your soleus that comes from your knee down your calf. Okay, this work exercise, you're gonna take your dumbbell in your hand, have it right here at the center of your body. Your knees are gonna be slightly bent, weight into your heels, okay? Because you're gonna squat into a high squat, bringing the dumbbell back into the middle of your legs, and then bringing it up. Now, you will see people going a little, a little bit higher, and that is going to more focus on that pectoralis major. So, you're going to swing, and lift, okay? So if you put your finger right here on your pec, you will feel it moving as you move your arm. Now, since I am using a light weight, I'm not gonna get sore from doing this movement, okay? Even you won't probably feel it, okay? Now, if you are a beginner, of course, I want you to start with no weight at all. Get that movement going, okay? Then move to a light weight, like I'm using. And then if it's too easy and you are getting that form down correctly, I want you to go ahead and do a heavier weight. Now, if you're doing this with a kettlebell, you're gonna grab, you're not gonna have to do it single armed, okay? You can when, you're got, when you've gotten better. But the first step is to do it both hands, bring both down to center, and then bring both up, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you from a different view so you can see we are also switched to our left hand at this point, okay? You're gonna, so you can see what my hips and my glutes are doing in order for it to, I, for me to get the proper extension when I come up. So when coming up, you want to pull your hips and your glutes forward by squeezing them.
into a dumbbell side bend. Okay? So, this exercise is going to focus more on your external and internal oblique area. Okay? And then you are going to feel a pull on your serratus anterior because it is right here underneath your, at the top of your ribs because you are going to be bending to your side, okay? And then of course, your rectus abdominis is going to be stretched as well, okay? So, take the dumbbell in your right hand and when it, having the, the weight in your right, you are going to go ahead and bend towards your right, okay? So you're going to pull here, but your right side is going to crunch together. And then hold it and come back up. And let the weight pull your body, okay? Making sure your shoulder, you're having great posture, your shoulders are rolled back, you have nice, not locked out legs, okay? And you just bend directly to the side. Don't go forward in your bend. You want to go directly to the side so the weight is actually rubbing down the side of your leg. Single leg plank, you can move into doing 
even um, a single single arm and single leg plank, you can move it into so many different ways. You can even add weight to your plank by using a, a weighted vest, ankle weights, whatever, honestly. You can even put a weighted, a uh, rubber weighted plate on your back, which if you do so, make sure you have somebody there with you so that you can get some assistance in taking that off, okay? Now, let's go ahead and go into the muscles, of course, that you're gonna be using in that exercise. So, people don't think, okay, a plank is for your core, yes. It is for your core. It is to work that transverse abdominis on that lower half of your core that everybody has the hardest time to get rid of, especially women, okay? Um, the transverse abdominis runs right underneath your belly button line. It's different from the rectus femoris uh, abdominis. So, when doing so, you should feel the exercise in that transverse abdominis, but you are still going to be activating your glutes, your hamstrings, your rectus abdominis, your uh, obliques, your triceps, your shoulders, all of that. And if you are not activating that core correctly, you are going to feel it in your back. And it's not going to be a nice, easy pain that you can just okay, I have this pain, I'm just going to continue doing it. No, it's going to be painful to where you're going to end up giving yourself some back issues, okay? So when doing a plank, make sure you are always, at any point, activating that core thoroughly. And if you start to have back pain, that means you are not fully activating that core, okay? So modified plank hold. Like I said, you're gonna get down on your elbows, which you can also do a modified plank on your hands as well, but to really get down into that transverse abdominis, get down onto your elbows, pull your knees back so that your back is aligned, okay? You're gonna keep your neck aligned and parallel by looking straight down in between your arms. My elbows are right underneath my shoulders. All right, I'm activating my core. My glutes are activated. Now, we're gonna hold for 30, take a break, and then go for another 30. So, we've already been holding it for about 10 seconds. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And when coming up, you want to go from elbow to hand and walk your hands back towards your knees. And then you sit down onto your knees. Now, I can hold my plank longer. I can't, but I want to show people that even if you are a beginner and it takes you multiple times to get to a minute, you want to try and get to that minute. No matter how many breaks you have to do, work up to getting to that minute. Meaning, take a break. 30 seconds, take a break, hold for another break, another 30. If you can't even hold for 30, do 15 second increments. But at every point that you try to do this exercise, I want you to challenge your body. When you challenge your body, then that means your body isn't going to get used to one parameter of time, okay? So, meaning, if you do this exercise Monday, then for, you can hold it for 15 seconds, no problem. And you're like, okay, I'm good. Next day you do it, say Wednesday, you want to try to move up to that 30 second increment and then continually move and progress.
progress your body until you've gotten to where you can hold the plank for a full minute without any rest breaks. Then at that point, go ahead, add a, another weight or see how long you can actually hold it. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and go back into our last 30. So, my hands down. I'm going to drop it down to my elbows, leaving it right underneath my shoulders. Again, my knees are back so that my neck, my back is, par uh, is parallel. I'm looking down at the floor, activating my core, strong arms instead of slouching my shoulders down. Strong arms, and you're going to hold it. All right? So, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And again, one hour at a time, bring it up to your hands and walk it back. All right? Next is going to be a modified side plank dip. Okay? It's different than just a typical mod a side plank. Okay? You are going to be going up into your side plank and just tapping your hips down to the ground. Now, again, if you cannot dip your hip and tap the, the ground, dip it enough to where your body is comfortable and you have not lost the form, okay? So, again, I'm doing it in modified version. There are a harder variations of this, even for a typical side plank, okay? But due to the fact of my pregnancy, Again, I have to do mod modified variations of certain exercises, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you on my right side how in a modified one, you can be up on your hand, okay? Then on my left, I'm going to go ahead and show you down on my elbow the same modifiedness, but it's going to be lower to the ground. Okay? Now, the muscles used in this exercise, again, are going to be your external and internal obliques. And of course, like a typical plank, you're not, you're going to be using not just your, your core. You're going to be using your shoulders, your arms, your hips to help stabilize you. And again, if your core is not activated properly or you need some more help to really learn how to activate your core properly, then please ask because your back will start to hurt. Again, even in a modified regular plank and in a side plank, if you aren't doing it correctly, you are going to feel pain. All right? So, for my right side, I'm going to have my hand right underneath my shoulder. It's still staying parallel to my shoulder. So if I had a ruler, you could see my shoulder and my wrist are in the same line. Okay? Now, I'm going to have one knee down and then my other, my top leg is going to be extended out. Okay? So, when doing that, you're, and then you're going to dip your hips down. And again, make sure your hips are forward so your butt's not going back. Your glutes are activated so that it's helping with your dip and your stabilization. Tap if you can. I can't even tap all the way down to the ground when I'm up on my hand.
I'm going to go down my elbow to show you how you can tap your hip to the ground. So again, elbow to the ground, right underneath my shoulder, up on my knee, one knee, let top leg is extended, I'm rolling my shoulders back so it's staying straight, and then I'm dipping that hip down. Okay, so easy as pie, people are going to say. Very simple. Those are the only four exercises that we are doing over today. Now, I do not want to stress this enough. If you have more time on your schedule and you know, you're like, you know what? That workout wasn't enough. I need more. Okay? then go and watch one of our older videos and combine them together. Any of our videos are more than able to be combined together. If you want to work on your core and your chest like this video, there's other videos for it. Or you're like, you know what? I just need more work on my core. I'm not activating my core right. Let me watch something else. Go do it. Or, Combine this video with some cardio. Get on a treadmill if you have one. If you have stairs in your house, go run up and down the stairs. Even cardio like playing just dance with your kids. Do it as long as you're actually thoroughly moving. That is the only way that that would count as cardio. You actually have to be really moving and trying to do the dance moves, okay? Now, I know a lot of people can't get outdoors right now because of the pandemic and us being at home. If you can't do that, then again, combine this with another video. We have videos that go over more cardio-induced exercises, okay? Um, also, if you are looking into wanting training because you can't go to your typical gym and you need a little bit of help or you want some motivation to get through that workout, we are offering virtual training sessions at $60 for an hour session um, just so that everybody is getting that movement and they're not lacking in their fitness journey that a lot of people are going to end up, that's going to end up happening because we're going to get used to being stuck at home. The weather's crappy now. It, it's all of these different things that will pile up, but make sure you keep moving. So that is why we are doing the virtual training so that you can choose between a 30 minute or a one hour session with us so that you can get that movement or the motivation that you are looking for. Um, now, we are also, if you are trying to come up with different things for your kids to do at home, we are in the process of launching a new gym oriented for kids that are stuck at home for school and you just don't know what they should be doing in their typical gym class other than, you know, push-ups and whatever and running, okay? Um, the We're going to be launching that very soon, so that keep a lookout for that. Um, if you just have questions on what, how, what we are or what we do, or you just need, you need more answers before you sign up with us, please send us an email or you can message us on any of our social medias. Um, our email is pmp underscore 2017 at yahoo.com. You can email us and we'll get back to you as soon as we see it. Um, if you are looking for that training session, now remember, all of the training sessions that are bought 
you get a free assessment before that. If you've never been a client with us or it's been a significant amount of time since you've seen us, okay? Um, so that the free assessment does not count towards the actual paid session with us. And you can choose between myself or my husband. Um, if you are looking for a higher impact workout, I suggest using my husband at this point due to the fact of me being pregnant, I'm not allowed to do high impact movements. Now, if you are pre or post um, natal, then I am, I am more than willing to help you with that. Or if you are more looking for a low impact workout because you are a beginner and you just don't know what you are capable of doing yet. Um, I'm more than willing to help you with those kind of things also. So again, there's different, different vari time variations, an hour or 30 minutes, and you can choose between my husband and myself. There are choices. We want to give people choices in this time, okay? Um, also, if you are wanting to just get a gift card for somebody else that you, you, you they tell you all the time, I need, a, I need a trainer. I need one. Okay. Go ahead and send us an email or a message so that we can go ahead and get you set up on that gift card for that, that person. So that they we can help you help them get onto their fitness journey. Alright? So I hope you guys understand the video today and you're liking the new setup of our our videos because we're trying to be help you with your work you with your workouts at home but we're also trying to educate you as, as well okay um, again if you have any questions or there's an exercise you would like to see and be told how this is helping your body then please go ahead and comment or message us and we'll get that posted up as fast as we can all right i hope you have a great day